Dun, 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 dun. Okay. Hey, 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 hey. That's right, Mr. Warrior here at your service. Lesson 11.6 for cruising through. We're almost done with this chapter. I can't believe it. Yes. Cool. What are we doing today? Ooh, it's understand volume. Understand volume. Yeah, I want to know how much there is inside that three-dimensional figure. We have an essential question. Definitely different ways to think of what an essential question is. It's really the focus of our lesson. Some call it an objective. Others call it a learning intention. Oh my goodness, so many different words. It says, how can you use unit cubes to find the volume of a rectangular prism? Okay, cool. This lesson was going to be so easy. I know, it's gonna be super easy. And we have an investigate. That's right, we have the, yes, the little purple hands. Look at it, it's a hands-on activity, which makes these lessons a little bit more difficult to teach because I can't really show you so much here on a two-dimensional plane. However, uh, you do what you can do in the classroom or at home with this video and do the best that you can. It does say connect. It says you can find the volume of a rectangular prism by counting unit cubes. It seems kind of easy, doesn't it? Volume is the measure of the amount of space a solid figure occupies and is measured in cubic units. Okay, Ooh. okay, we're, we're thinking 3D now. Now it says each unit cube has a volume of one cubic unit. And you can see by our picture here, look, we have this rectangular prism with these eight cubes that are all together. And they're showing you how that they're numbered. Each one of them is considered one cubic unit. Super easy, don't you think? Yeah. Yes. Now it says the rectangular prism above is made up of, and then we just talked about that, that was eight unit cubes and it has a volume of eight cubic units super easy now for you guys materials look at you need a rectangular prism net that's the two dimensional little paper that you can fold also some centimeter cubes so this is what you're going to do is you are going to cut out fold and tape the net to form a rectangular prism and that's actually what this is here in the picture right here okay this right here we have this paper that's been folded out, so make 3D. See, and those things are gonna fit inside. Okay, Ooh, that was kind of fun. Okay, anyways, so use centimeter, bleh, use centimeter cubes to fill the base of the rectangular prism without gaps or overlaps. Okay, it means they have to fit in there exactly. Can't have a space, like a cube like all lopsided in there. Each centimeter cube has a length, a width, and a height of one centimeter, okay? And a volume of one cubic centimeter. Now this is how many centimeter cubes make up the length of the first layer, the width and the height. So how many centimeter cubes make up the layer? Okay, so if we look at that, I can see by looking inside that it looks like they have one, two, three, four, five. Looks like we have five. So I would say one length is definitely a five. The width looks like it's one, two, three, four. Is that also five? I believe so. And the height is just one. It's just one cube high, okay? All right, so how many centimeter cubes are used to fill the base? If it's going five one direction, like one array, five is another array. The height doesn't really matter because it's just one layer to fill the base. So it would just be five times five. Aren't there 25 cubes in there? That's what I would say. We come to see it says continue filling the rectangular prism layer by layer. Count the number of centimeter cubes used for each layer. How many centimeter cubes are in each layer? Well, we already decided that was 25 because that very bottom layer had 25. How many layers of cubes fill that rectangular prism? It's five. If it was five high, and it looks like it would be about five high. How many centimeter cubes fill the prism? Well, 25 times five is 125. So the volume of the rectangular prism is 125 cubic centimeter. Now, if that's not the case, of course your answer could be different because I don't have these little cubes right in front of me here, but it seems to me that looks like almost like a square, like a cube. And since we're talking about cubic units, I'm just gonna guess that's the case. If not, you can make a comment and say, Mr. War, that's not it, okay? And I'll go, okay, because it could, I don't know, it could be six layers high. I doubt it. It's probably five. Page master. Yeah. So now we're going to draw some conclusions. Okay. We're going to describe the relationship among the number of centimeter cubes you used to fill each layer, the number of layers, 
and the volume of the prism. Also describe it. Well, what did we see? We knew we saw that each layer had 25 and there are five layers. So 25 times five is 125. So the relationship. So I'm going to just write. Like what I just mentioned, the east layer of the rectangular prism was made up of 25 centimeter cubes and there were five layers. So therefore 25 times 5 equals 125, which is really the volume of that rectangular prism, which is 125 cubic units. Now this is apply. If you had a rectangular prism that had a length of 3 units, a width of 4 units, and a height of 2 units, how many unit cubes would you need for each layer? Okay, and then how many unit cubes would you need to fill the rectangular prism? So there's a two-question problem here. All right, well, first of all, we know that the area, we talked about that when we were doing two-dimensional figures, we have the length times the width, and that's what we have here. We have a length of three units and a width of four. We can figure out the, the layer, so the, each layer will be 12, which is it will be three times four, which is equal to 12, 12 cubes. And then since we know the height is two, we're going to have one layer of 12 and another layer of 12. So we could think of it as just taking, we're going to take 12, 12 cubes then, one layer, multiply it by two, that's the height, and that's going to equal 24 cubic units. And that becomes our volume. Okay, are we good with that? Yeah, so that's it. So to fill up that thing, you know, we had one layer and then we had another layer. Okay, so to fill it up would be 24 cubic. Well, it's 24 cubic units is the actual unit of measure, but you want to think of it as 24 centimeter cubes. Okay, all right, time to make some connections. It says to find the volume of a three dimensional figure, or to find the volume of three dimensional figures, you measure in three directions. For a rectangular prism, you measure the length, okay, the width, and the height, okay. And it says volume is measured using cubic units, as you saw I was doing above, such as cubic centimeters, cubic inches, or cubic feet. That was fun underlining all that. Bum, bum, bum. And then it says which has a greater volume, one cubic centimeter or one cubic inch? Explain. So would you know how many centimeters are in? one inch. This is showing that, I don't know if this is drawn to scale, but here it looks like an inch is definitely larger, but I happen to know that there's 2.54 centimeters in one inch. Just one of those odd numbers that I've just memorized. So that's what I want to write. That's how I know this was larger. Explain. So when unsure, reread the question. So which has a greater, oh, which has a greater volume? Okay, the one cubic centimeter. Okay, so since I know that the uh, inch is larger than the centimeter, then I'm going to say that the cubic inch is going to have a greater volume. Okay, okay. Kind of like what I just said there. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah. Now it says find the volume of the prism if each cube represents one cubic centimeter, one cubic inch, and one cubic foot. And we have the units here. Okay, so they're all going to have the same answer. I guess they just want you to see the the different little measurements here. So the volume, like we already kind of learned when we did area, area was length times width. So here we have, if you think the width, here we have the length. And now this is that new one where we have the height. When you think about it, if that's the area, then the volume then is just going to equal length times width times height because that's what we've done. We, we found out what was on one layer, which is our area. And then going up becomes the volume, which is the height. So we're just multiplying them all together. I wrote over my numbers. Okay, three times six times two then is what we're looking for. Here we have 18 times two. 18 double is 36. So we're going to have 36 cubic centimeters if that was the unit we were using. It would be 36 cubic inches if that's the unit that was asked. And the same for the cubic feet. Okay, even though we know this would have the largest volume, then this one than the centimeter. Okay, so now some mathematical practice six here. It says, would the prism above be the same size if it were built with centimeter cubes, inch cubes, or foot cubes? Explain. Uh, well, first of all, no, they wouldn't be the same size because these units here of measurement are different. 
And of course, like I just said, the centimeter cubes is the smallest, then the inch cubes, then the foot cubes. So definitely no to that. <laughs> Okay, kind of sloppy. I was kind of in a hurry. But it says the prism would have the same number of cubes, but the cubic feet cubes, like the ones you're using for the cubic feet, it would have a greater volume. So it's going to be larger than, uh, and this is cubic centimeters and cubic inches. Okay, there I explain. Woohoo! Yeah, yeah, it's another video. Yeah. I can't believe it. You know, these videos are just going faster and faster. I don't know. Like we're moving at warp speed. Okay, my friends. It's so great for you to come along. I appreciate you coming and checking out my math videos. Hey, if you're not a sub, why don't you sub? Join this growing team, my friend. And by all means, any feedback is always appreciated. Uh, I'd like to hear what you guys think out there. So, now, live long and prosper.